Hey everybody, how's it going? Stout man coming back at you today. And um, I just got back from a little old place called Crypticon. <laughs> this is the uh, Seattle 2015 Crypticon uh, booklet. Let you know uh, where everything is. So we used this to, you know, find out where everybody was and everything. What all, all the things that were going on and so that we could just be able to record as much as we possibly could. And we recorded a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm not sure when this video is going to show up. Here's our press pass that we got. Um, I'm not sure when the those videos are going to show up. They might have already been posted. Or they might be posted the week after this. Or what. We have a lot of video content to sort through. We have a lot of audio to match to the video. And it's going to be pretty difficult. So it's not necessarily going to be something that's going to come quickly. But when it does come, it's going to be really cool. Um, you might see some stuff this week. You might see some stuff next week. I'm, I'm not sure. Because I honestly don't know when this is getting posted. This could be posted after all of the Crypticon stuff. Or it could be posted before all of the Crypticon stuff. So... Regardless, I figured why not get this little video out of the way. I'm going to show you some of the things that I picked up at Crypticon. Uh, and I'm going to show you all like the horror-related stuff that I picked up at Crypticon. Because I picked up a few other things that were not at all horror-related. And I'll talk about those in another video. But uh, to start off with, uh, these were two for five. And Brandon picked one up and gave it to me. And he got one for himself as well. They are little Crypticon Seattle brain stress balls. So if you really want to crush the hell out of someone's brain, because you're really stressed out, you want to freaking destroy their brain. Well, now now you can with a nice little Crypticon Seattle logo on it. <laughs> um. And then another thing that Brandon forced upon me, which I had no problem with whatsoever, was this. I've never heard of this band before. Arrakis? Ar 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 Arrakis? Arrakis? Uh, Eterno Elementum is the name of the album. And, uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool. It looks very dark and brooding, as you may have noticed. And uh, the disc art is really nice as well. It's like, you know, the printing is really nice on this. Um, it just seems like a really cool album. I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet. But, uh, yeah, really cool stuff. Um, Blarg. I was really happy to get this. Brandon just gave it to me. So that's awesome. People were just giving me things all weekend. Because I'm such a cheap ass that I can't buy them myself, I guess. I mean, I bought some stuff for myself, as you'll see, but yeah. Another thing that Brandon got for me, Night of the Comet on VHS. Now, I already have the Blu-ray of this, but uh, as he noted here, the uh, cover art for the VHS here is pretty damn cool. Um, I'm not really into VHS collecting, but I do think that it's cool. I do think some of the artwork is cool and you know um, I think it's nice to have this in my collection if only as like another addendum to uh, to the collection and whatnot. Show some Night of the Comet love. Uh, finally the last thing that somebody bought me that was horror related uh, I was fully intending to buy myself, but event at I get we went to we got it at FYE, and they were having a buy one used get one for one dollar sale, and so uh, she came along and she said, uh, "Hey, do you have anything that's used a used DVD?" And I said, "Yeah, actually I do," and she took it and bought it for me for a buck. So yeah, 
Night of the Living Dead. This is the uh, Millennium Edition, which has uh, the original classic with a whole bunch of special features. It's in a red case. Newly approved THX transfer, trailers and TV spots, dual commentary tracks featuring creator, director George A. Romero and the entire cast, film parody Night of the Living Bread, original mono soundtrack, Dolby Digital 5.1 remix, still photo gallery featuring rare color photos, the history of Romero's company, a, the latent image, scenes from the lost Romero film There's Always Vanilla, video interview with the Night of the Living Dead's Judy Ridley, final interview by star Dwayne Jones, foreign and domestic posters and collectibles, original props, the entire original suiting script, cast members for personal scrapbooks, THX optimizer to assure proper TV monitor calibration, Romero directed TV spots and short films, and a full color insert featuring liner notes by Stephen King. I shit you not, that's all on this release. I was blown away when I saw how many special features were on that. And, uh, yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Glad to finally have it in my collection. I didn't have Night of the Living Dead proper in my collection at any time. I have uh, Night of the Living Dead reanimated, but I don't have the original itself. So, yeah. Nice to have that. And then, finally, I started buying things for myself. And I found this, which is actually kind of hard to come by, because it's out of print. I believe it's out of print in every way, shape, and form. Meaning, it's on Blu-ray, but the Blu-ray is out of print. It's on DVD, but the DVD is out of print. It's on VHS, but the VHS is out of print. Every format that this is on, it is out of print on, to my knowledge at least. So when I saw this used in the store for five bucks, which actually ended up being like four bucks, I think, I didn't hesitate for a moment. Now, I really want the big deluxe special edition box set of this, but it's even harder to find that version nowadays than it is to find this version. Um, and this is the special edition Divamax version from Anchor Bay. Uh, comes with audio commentary, widescreen. Uh, let's see here. Theatrical t trailers, TV spots, radio spots, poster, and advertising gallery. George A. Romero bio and comic book preview. Um, yeah, I just needed this in my collection because I've been wanting to watch this every Halloween for the past few years, but it's like I don't have it in my collection, and it cost a bajillion dollars to get it any way you want to get it because it's not in print anymore. Why is this not in print? Why is this, one of the prototypical horror movies that everybody knows and loves, not in print right now? What in the actual F, man? Regardless, I got it for like four bucks and very happy with that. Next up, we found somebody who was selling bootlegs. I won't say who and I won't say where, but we found somebody selling bootlegs and... Uh, we, I believe both Brandon and I picked this up, but I, I'll wait for him to talk about his, his pickups in another video. I'm not going to do that for him. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I picked this up for uh, $10, I believe. Yeah, it was $10. It was quite expensive for a bootleg, but there's no other way to get this movie. So, yeah, this is something, the Poughkeepsie tapes, that Sean... Uh, Zarin Isaac introduced me to. I had never heard of this before, and then he told me about it, and he and it's one of those movies that you know was never like officially released, and you can't get it really any other way than through bootleg. The whole idea being that it's one of those movies that just gets passed around and passed around, and never actually got released. So uh, lo and behold, when you open up the case here. It's it's literally the cheapest DVD-R you can find. <laughs> but it's got a nice little case here. I really like this uh, cover art and whatnot. And on the back you can see some pretty nice artwork there as well and information as well. 
So, yeah, I was really happy to see this because, you know, it's one that I've wanted, but you can't get it. So, now to be able to have it in my DVD collection, even if it is a bootleg, well, that's just the way it's got to be, I guess. Now, if the original creator wanted to go to the lengths of actually putting it out of release, I would absolutely, absolutely pay for a legitimate copy of the Poughkeepsie tapes. But as it exists right now, I feel like it's kind of a part of the lore and it adds to the charm of this release, this bloop bootleg, that um, it is something you can't get anywhere else. And it is something that you have to find through more, I guess, seedy means. So, yeah. I, I like the fact that I was able to pick this up. <laughs> And then, last but not least, I picked this up primarily for the slipcover because the slipcover is absolutely gorgeous. 28 Days Later. I really like this slipcover. Uh, I didn't even know that it existed. And uh, there's the back for you. But yeah, I had not seen or heard about this slipcover at all. It's just got the basic release underneath. But I been wanted to pick this one up for a while. I did not like the sequel that much, but I did like the original 28 Days Later. And I've had friends tell me that it's worth it to get the Blu-ray because there are certain scenes that are shot on film and they look excellent on Blu-ray and everything else looks very good as well. So, yeah, I mean, about time, I guess, I, that I picked this up, right? I think it was about seven bucks. Yeah pretty damn good price for a pretty damn good movie and mostly paid for the slipcover on this one because I'm sure I could have gotten it for like five bucks or less somewhere but I didn't care what I wanted was the movie that I like out of the series in uh, a really nice packaging of some sort and this it's really nice packaging and that that's all I got that was horror-related at the convention. Can you believe it? I went to a horror convention, and that's all I came away with that was horror-related in any way, shape, or form. Go ahead. Be ashamed. Be ashamed of me. I, I can't do anything about that now. I'm home. The convention is over. I can't buy anything else to appease my fans. I apologize. But yeah, that'll do it for now. In the next video, I'm going to show you the other things I picked up that were not necessarily horror-related while at Crypticon 2015. Thanks for watching. Peace.